my son. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Lots of things have changed since I was a child. When I was a child, television was reserved for Saturday morning cartoons. We didn't have a cell phone. We didn't have an iPad. That would be tough, David, right? That would be a tough thing to do. No iPad, no cell phone. Maybe that's not in your venue still. But there was one thing that was really special, as I recall, being a child, is when you would ask for your first bison, to have your first bison. And that happened somewhere between maybe 8 and 11 years old, around that age group. But you never forget your first bicycle. I think part of it is that it was a special gift. Uh, it was a pricey gift, and, and it gave you kind of like a sense of freedom. You could go in your bike anywhere you wanted, and uh, I can still remember my first bike. And I was thinking of that in light of gifts and what we like to get as a gift. And that was the gift that, that I remember, uh, and perhaps it's the experience of many people, that is kind of like your first uh, special Gift, something you really wanted to have. Uh, part of human nature is that even when we think that we're working for something, that we're trying to accomplish something, once we get there, it may not feel as good as you thought it was going to feel. It's part of human nature. We're always wanting more. We, we kind of get to where we want it to be, and then we look back and say, well, it's kind of wearing down again and kind of wearing out and, and not a special anymore, even though it is certainly uh, accomplishments that we can make. But it's part of human nature that we're always asking for something better. And I was thinking of the first reading today. We have Solomon, and God is telling Solomon, ask for anything you want, and I'll give it to you. What would you do if God would tell you that? Ask for anything you want, and whatever you ask me, I will give it to you. It's a tough question because I assume that if you're like me, uh, we wouldn't know where to begin. And a lot of the things that we could ask for, they would be kind of temporary. They will not definitely satisfy us. And maybe the moment that we ask for it, we say, oh, I should have asked for something else. And, and it doesn't kind of work as we would like. And that's why the first reading today is so special because Solomon asks for something very unusual. He is given the opportunity to ask for anything he wants. And actually, God is very pleased with him because he asks for an understanding heart. Uh, we have interpreted that, and even God talks about a very wise decision because God is going to grant him a wise understanding heart. And 
it, it is interesting because we have always associated this passage with what we call the wisdom of Solomon. We still talk about that phrase, the wisdom of Solomon. Actually, if you continue the chapter that follows the chapter that we read today in the first reading, the next chapter is that uh, scene when two mothers come to Solomon because they are fighting over whose child is this baby. And Solomon says, well, I got the solution. Let's cut the baby in half. And we'll give one half to one mother and one half to the other mother. And then, of course, the real mother says, oh, no, don't do that. The other one was willing to go ahead with that horrible decision. And, of course, Solomon knows who the real mother is. Because the real mother would not allow that to happen to her child. And, and we talk about the wisdom of Solomon that could do things like that. But if you think about it, it's a beautiful passage because uh, he asks for something that God is very pleased with because he's asking literally for an understanding heart to be able to understand. And as we look at the world today, you know, what a great gift because a lot of the problems that we have today is that we do not have many times an understanding heart. We don't even listen to each other. We don't allow someone to just finish what they are saying. A lot of times, as people are speaking to us, we're already thinking what we're going to respond. And Solomon is saying, we need to change that. He's motivating us to work in a different direction where we can listen to each other, try to understand each other, try to not judge others immediately, but to try to see where they're coming from and why are they saying what they are saying. And then Jesus, in the Gospel, he kind of uh, emphasizes the teaching that uh, there's a gift that we should ask for. And, and if you remember the last few weeks, he's been telling us different parables, mainly related to the sea, the word, the soil, where it falls, and how it gives fruit, etc. Today, we make a transition to the Gospel of Matthew, and he's talking about what we call the parables of the kingdom. He's trying to tell us what the kingdom of God is all about. But the whole point is that he doesn't have enough images to help us understand the kingdom. He's trying to make himself understood. And he's giving us different comparisons. The kingdom of heaven is like, and you know, some of those examples are kind of weird, strange for us. Uh, we're used to them. We don't pay close attention to them. But if you pay attention to the parable, the comparison, that Jesus is making. The first one, he says, it's like a treasure that a man finds buried in the field. He uncovers the treasure. And then the next line is kind of uh, puzzling. He says, he discovers this treasure and then he buries it again. He puts it underground again and then he sells everything he has to buy that fee. You know, I was thinking, legally, even in our state, if you find a treasure, you have a legitimate right to part of that treasure. So there is a legal, legitimate right to what you find. I, I assume that obviously the land is owned by somebody else. So if you uncover a treasure, you cannot just take it and go home. That may not be legal. But you know, I was thinking we have like a warranty. When you buy something, there's a warranty of retribution that if it's defective, then you have a claim over that right. I, I was wondering if the buyer has some kind of warranty that he offers the seller. If you discover a treasure, if you need to tell the seller of the field that there is a treasure in your field, is there, is there a warranty for the seller so that he knows that there's something very valuable there? Maybe not. Uh, but anyway, it's a weird comparison, but the point is not the legality of bringing out a treasure, but it's the second part of that. Jesus says, he sold everything he had to be able to buy that field. He gave up everything. Why? Because the gift of the treasure of the kingdom of heaven is so valuable that nothing else compares to that. And that's the point. Jesus is reminding us that the greatest thing we do on this earth is to work so that 
we can make it to heaven. That's the journey of life. And think about it in the sense that, according to human nature, nothing really pleases us that much. And that's why God praises Solomon. He's saying, you didn't ask for a long life. What's a long life? You know, you people that live a hundred years, if you have a loved one and he or she lives a hundred years, you still want it a little more. You know, it's always painful to let go. Uh, some people don't want to live to be a hundred years, you know, in the sense that uh, God knows what you have to endure if you have to live that long. So that's not a real gift. You didn't ask for riches, God tells Solomon, because riches are relative, they come and go, they, they create more problems than they solve. Of course, they can pay a lot of bills and help us in life, but the bottom line is that you realize at the end, somebody's gonna keep your riches. You're gonna leave them to somebody. You're not gonna leave with anything. I've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul behind. You leave everything here, everything is left. So that's not a good gift either. So in the petition of Solomon for an understanding heart, we have the great wisdom of Jesus saying, the real gift is to ask for the kingdom of heaven. That's what we aim for. That's what we long for. That's what life is all about. And a reminder that that's the most important thing that we do, that everything we do Everything we think, everything we say, is supposed to lead us to that kingdom. And if we would live like that, definitely it would be a very different world if everybody would commit themselves to live in such a way. So, I still remember my beautiful bicycle. I can almost feel it. I can see the color, but nothing compares. No gift to what God has promised to those who love Him. Jesus reminds us of that today as he gives us the beautiful parables of the kingdom, encouraging us to not think about temporal things, but to think about the things that really matter in life as we aim for that kingdom.